Hello everybody and welcome to Three Colours Up. In this one we're going to be tackling this. This is a 3D printed, sci-fied up Saracen armoured personnel carrier. A Cold War vehicle that has been given a new lease of life in a sort of grim, dark, far future kind of place. Um, full disclosure, I bought this miniature. I also bought four others of the same model because I'm doing a Cadian army and I thought Chimera's just don't cut it anymore, do they? So I went onto Etsy and found a uh, seller by the name of Jake, link in the description, where I was able to buy this uh, as part of a larger bundle, but he also took a custom order, so I was able to buy five of these on their own. Fantastic looking model. He also linked me to the original creator, uh, GG Wargame, who is on Patreon, so there's a link for that as well. Um, also got permission from him to actually talk about that and mention uh, the Etsy store and mention uh, the original designer as well. I figure stuff like this, because it is very much a unique design that can be fitted into many different sci-fi genres, uh, many different sci-fi war games, as well as genres, I guess. Grim dark and not so grim dark, I guess. Um, I wanted to cover this one because I enjoyed the vehicle, I enjoy the actual one as well as the model one. So this was bought as a 3D print, already printed as a kit, so it worked out pretty well. I uh, didn't have to spend days and days with my own printer when it's busy doing other things. Anyway, enough of that. Links in the description to the original creator and the Etsy store. And in the meantime, let's get down onto the table and let's paint it. All right, it's 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 been a quick one since I've been uh, down at the table, I have to remember if I've done everything right or not. So we're going to start work on the Saracen here and preamble as usual. It's been primed in Chaos Black and then has been dusted over with, uh, I believe it's, is it Grace here this time? I think it's Grace here this time. Uh, just to try and get a bit of pre-shading in there. And it works on a vehicle like this because you can really focus on the outer details, the upper details, and let in between the wheels, for example, be a little bit darker. So we're going to move on, uh, move to our first color. And our first color, which is our base color, is Vallejo model color khaki. And this is going to be applied through the airbrush, uh, thinned roughly two to one uh, in the pot there. So what we're going to be aiming to do with this is basically giving everything, the entire vehicle, a, a light-ish coat of this to allow the pre-shading uh, to work. So uh, you know what I'm like with pre-shading, I've probably I'm probably about to mess it up. Also, I have an extractor fan now, so it's going to be noisy. So let's just get on with it and see how we get on. With the khaki now done, we can have a look and uh, we'll see just, it's not exactly perfect, but there is, the appreciating is still present there. There's a few little bits here and there that are missed but I'm not too concerned about that. Two reasons. A, I'm doing this for an army. B, I know there's a step that's going to cover uh, bits and bobs that I've missed, so I'm not too concerned about that. So we're gonna move on to the camouflage next, and for the first color of the camouflage, we're going Vallejo model color uh, refractive green, because is it really a military model if you don't use refractive green? And uh, we're gonna be using this as the basis of a three-tone camouflage, much like a German World War II scheme, which uh, if you watch The Weekenders and I've said, you know, my guard army wasn't going to go three-tone and then it did. Well, now it is. So again, we're airbrushing this. Uh, so we have it in the pot and it's, looks like it's working okay. Yeah, it should be fine. So we're basically gonna do this and uh, once that's done, we have our third color and that'll be our camouflage done. So uh, again, with the uh, extractor fan on, I don't really, I can't really talk very much. So we're just gonna be looking at doing some one line that's going to cross the whole vehicle and other lines that are going to follow up around it and then uh, we'll move on to the, the brown after that. So extractor fan on and away we go. With our green now down, we can have a look at what our camouflage pattern is starting to look like. You can see how I've wanted to um, carry it up over certain details, just the way a camouflage should be done. So we've been carrying it up over onto the turret in certain places, down across these lower pieces here, 
and occasionally spilling over onto the corners. Don't worry about that. Ignore that. And uh, this is how camouflage is supposed to work. I'm pretty sure I've covered this before. It's meant to continue its line over whatever is in its way. So that's how camouflage actually works to break up the, the outline of something. So what we're going to be doing now is adding a third color, which will be our final color to our camouflage. And this one is going to be model color Panzer series German camouflage medium brown. Again, another Vallejo color. This one, because we're going to be doing German three tone essentially, will follow more or less the same line as some of the green. So for example, up here, we're probably going to start the brown here, follow this line, but stop somewhere around the middle of the vehicle, maybe let it carry up onto the turret as well. And what we're going to be doing is letting the brown hug, on this example, the right hand side of each of these lines going up. And then when we flick it over to the other side, we're going to do the exact same thing, except we're going to let the brown follow again on the right hand side, but it's going to look opposite uh, when you see the vehicle. So the brown is going to follow this way, this way, and this way. And then on the back, probably follow along here because this piece will follow some up and around here. So it's there's not exactly a science to it, but once you have a method and you're applying that method over the entire thing, that's what makes the camouflage look more cohesive and more purposeful. So back on with our um, <clears throat> extractor fan and let's get the brown down. So with our camouflage now done, we can have a look at how it's turned out, and I'm pretty happy with that. I think it serves its purpose pretty well. It's nice and tidy-ish, more or less, and has plenty of interest, visual interest. So we're going to be moving on to a dry brush, and for that we're going to be returning to model color khaki for this. And this is part of my, my whole um, make the camouflage work, then break it. So this is us starting to break it a little bit. Um, by dry brushing our base color back onto the model, we're going to be getting some of our highlighting and some of our edges uh, touched up a little bit. So it's just a case of going over the whole vehicle with the khaki and just working the edges up a little bit. With the dry brush now done, we can see that we've started to break up that camouflage a little bit and just make the vehicle a little more interesting to look at. So we're getting some of the lines back into some of our details here, so little bits here and there and everywhere. We're going to move on now to a lot of base coating. Well, a fair amount of base coating. So first up, I'll be doing Citadel Air Corvus Black for our tires, as well as the metal parts of the tools, so there's the axe up there, I think there's another axe on the other side, something like that. We're then going to move on to air lead belcher. Uh, this is going to be for our gun barrels, and um, I don't think I have anything else that I really do with that, so that as well. Um, then after that we're going to move on to a contrast paint, Saigor Brown, that's going to be for our wood, so we have our big log on the side here, and we have two storage boxes on this side. Uh, the locks and the latches on the boxes will also go the lead belcher. So I'm just going to do that and then when we come back we'll look at, um, we'll see if we're ready for our big wash step, if not we'll, we'll have some transfers and stuff to apply as well. With all our details base coated in, we can now see that the vehicle is starting to look like something. Now, there's a couple of things I want to point out. So. I haven't touched any of the lights or the lenses or anything like that on the front of the vehicle yet. That's because they're going to be done after um, our enamel wash and it's been all done and settled down and even had a varnish over it just to make sure it's protected. So what I'm doing now is decals and the decals I have, which I've already been pre-soaking in some water, are from the Cadian decal sheets. So they're down there all ready to go. So applying these because they're slightly larger and I will hand it to them, GW does make good decal material. 
We're just going to be applying them by hand. Slide it off onto the model. And then what we can do is take a brush with a little bit of water. Dampen it and then we can slide it around. Like so. And then once that's down, take a dry brush. Position that decal a little bit more. And then start removing the water from underneath. Like that. So that's that decal in place. Then just need to do the others. So we have two others to do here. I've got a little sort of, I don't know, call this a tactical marking, something like that. I should really be being a bit more careful. There we go. Now, damp brush first. And we want to just position that a little bit better. Like that. Again, with our other brush to soak up the excess and squeeze it out from underneath the transfer a little, where I want it. Now, from there, we're going to take some decal softener from Green Stuff World. I'm just going to put a few drops of that onto my painting area. And then with the brush that we were using to soak up the water, we're going to put some of our softener into that and then very carefully apply the softener over the transfer, let it do its thing. It will reactivate the movement a little bit. That's okay. We've got to be fairly concise with the movement of the transfer as well, because the softener on GW transfers will start to work very quick. So you don't get much time for corrections or repositioning. It's already starting to soften like so. So we need to let that dry. And then when we come back, we can move on to our enamel wash. With the transfers now settled, it's time to get on to the fun part. So let's just have a look. They've settled down quite nice. Uh, there's always the option to seal them a little bit with something, maybe a matte varnish or something before we move on. However, we're just going to move on because this is the fun part. And we're going to be moving on to an enamel wash. This is AK Interactive's dark brown enamel wash. Now it says on the, on the pot here for green vehicles, there's green on it, it'll do. So I'm going to be using a large synthetic brush, one of these uh, GW brushes, which is the large dry brush. I know we're applying uh, an enamel wash with a dry brush, whatever, doesn't matter. So it's basically a case of <clears throat> giving the entire vehicle a coat of this and just working it into every nook and cranny on the vehicle. Now it'll do a lot of that work itself because it's sort of, because of the oil, it's sort of a, a capillary motion. It will spread itself around a bit. However, I don't want to completely oversaturate the vehicle with it because it'll take longer to remove later on. So what we're trying to do is make each <clears throat> dip into the pot last as long as possible. That way it's getting spread around nicely and not gathering too heavily. It's going to be like a, a fairly even coat across the whole thing. But this is the the crux, really. This is the, the main uh, method of getting something to look a bit more grimdark, is just basically put a, an oil or an enamel wash all over the thing. Because then afterwards we get to do uh, the removal of the material, so we actually get to play with it a little bit. And uh, that's what gives us a really gritty, grimy looking model. So. Let's just carry on with this. And then when we come back, it'll be dry and we can start to move it around. So after leaving the model for about <clears throat> an hour after applying the wash, it's mostly dry. It's a little bit pulled in the bottom of the wheels, but that's not a big deal. So we're going to be moving on to tidying this up a little bit. And for that, we're going to be using some uh, load or thinners and using another 
broad dry brush we're using a softer bristle this time and um, what we're trying to do is not soak the brush we're trying to make sure that it's just damp and what we want to do is to start wiping the model with this brush and what that's going to do is reactivate the wash and start to move it around and it almost acts to pull it away from areas that we want to be a little cleaner so we can focus on areas like up on the top of the turret here and we can start to add like a little bit of a streak that's why i'm using sort of sort of a broad brush and trying to move the wash around a little bit this also helps bring back a lot of the highlighting that we've done with the dry brushing and also brightens up certain parts of our camo scheme as well because it pulls the wash away from it and starts to reveal it again a bit more cleanly so after having used our low odor terps sorry i said thinner earlier it's terps um, to move the wash around a little bit and brighten things up we now have a vehicle that looks a lot more interesting with everything in its proper place i've also given the model a coat of matte varnish and if you're wondering the matte varnish i'm using is still my AK Interactive uh, Ultra Matte. That just seals everything down and just gives us that little protective layer and gives us a beautiful solid matte finish and I actually really love this one. So with that done, we're gonna to return to our lead belcher and what we're gonna be using for this or what we're gonna be using it for is painting in the lenses of our lights. So the lights, the two headlights on the front so let's just get them in. Sort of like so. I'm going to try and do it quickly enough here, but we want to paint these lenses in on the front, the one on top of the turret up here as well, and these ones in here. So anything that's like a little sensor head or something like that, we want to touch with a little bit of silver. That way we're going to be able to colour them in without too much hassle. There was a little bit of a misprint there, but that's fine. It, it didn't misprint on all the vehicles I have because I have five of these. Well, actually I actually have six of them. Uh, <laughs> so we want to do that, but also maybe just touch up some of the gun barrels a little bit too, uh, just to bring back some of that silver look. Make it look a little cleaner in places. A bit like that just to define the, the metal parts again. So over the muzzle of the gun in the hull here, a little bit down the barrel. We don't want to completely repaint these parts. We want them to retain a little bit of that coloration uh, from the wash. We just want them to stand out a little bit again. So we're gonna do that. And then when we come back, we will paint the lenses in. With the metal areas touched up a little bit and the light lenses all painted, we can now work on coloring them. So the first one I'm going to do is Citadel Spirit Stone Red. Obviously this is gonna be for the red lenses and we just need to figure out which lenses we want. So I think really it's just gonna be a case of these little side lights. I can get my brush in there carefully enough. So both of those. Like that. And then all the lenses that are in this sort of box here on the side. Because I think that's going to look quite good. And the reason I'm using the technical over silver is it just gives a bit of life to the model. It's quite bright in amongst all our drab and matte finishes. It just gives us this little bit of extra pop to the model. So that's all we're gonna do for the red. Then we only have these three lenses left, which I believe I'm just gonna go with a blue and we're gonna use Soulstone Blue for that. These technical paints in particular, I love the, the red and the blue one. They're very, very handy for all sorts of stuff but particularly for doing this kind of thing. So straight in there, 
with the blue. The blue always seems to be a bit more heavy, a bit more vibrant, which I'm definitely not complaining about because it looks great. And here we have it, our far distant grim future Saracen APC. And I'm very happy with this model. Obviously, it's for my Acadian Force. Uh, I just love the alternative model look at the minute. I'm really, really digging sort of finding anything that isn't just the, the regular plastic kit and just going for it and just getting one. Um, Saracen in particular, I just really love the look of Saracens. I think they're a, they're a class looking old um, post-war British military vehicle. I love seeing them drive around. I have driven one as well, which is kind of cool. And they're just, with a little bit of sci-fi redesign, making it from a six-wheeler to an eight-wheeler really makes this model something different without really hammering the, the sci-fi element too hard. But that's what I really like. I have seen a couple of others um, where they hammed up the, the sci-fi element a lot and it didn't really tickle me right. This does though, because it's pure Saracen with an extra couple of wheels and the guns made to, to look more, you know, sci-fi 40k. But what we end up with is a vehicle that is very charming, fits the Chimera alternative role very nicely uh, without having to break its design too much, without having to break that look too much. It looks like a transport and that's exactly what it is and it's great. So there's not really much to say because you've seen most of the model across the whole video anyway. But what I will say is do check out the link in the description. Go and uh, see if there's anything you fancy from the original sculptor or from the Etsy store that I got these one, uh, this one from. This, of course, is for my army, and for my army, I have five of them. So here's another one. <laughs> so you can kind of see two of them together. Looks pretty decent. Obviously, I haven't completely finished this one yet, not to this standard yet, but it's getting there. And um, in general, I think it's just a very charming model. So. As always, I'm sure many of you have stopped watching by now, which is fine. But, as always, thank you so much for watching. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.